Now, more than ever, the whole world knows about sacrifice and having to give things up because of COVID-19. We have curtailed our movement, our employment, our relationships, and all mainly because we care for each other. Some people have even paid the ultimate price in the line of duty. Ireland was no stranger to sacrifice before the current pandemic. For example, remember the crew of the Irish Coast Guard Rescue Helicopter 116 four years ago? I want to talk to you today about an event that happened just four cans ago. I'll explain what I mean by this later, but first, let me take you to the new Clonakilty Black Pudding Production Facility. This family business has a terrific reputation for caring for their customers, and just four years ago, production returned here to Clonakilty where it had all started. Clonakilty has become renowned all over the world for Clonakilty Black Pudding. First to make the secret recipe was a farmer's wife called Johanna O'Brien in the 1800s and it was produced and sold at Harrington's Butcher's Shop here on Pier Street. As they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating and because of its unique taste, the local people of Clonakilty made sure its production has been sustained. This is because when Edward Toomey first bought over the business in 1976, he intended to stop making the pudding, considering it too much bother. However, as the locals kept on asking for it, Edward and his wife Colette soon began to realise that they had something incredibly special. So they guarded the secret mix of ingredients by disclosing it to no one and worked hard to make the most of every opportunity to promote their product. Their vision was to sell black pudding everywhere that people would be able to buy it in their own local shop. Such was the increasing demand for black pudding that as there were no sustainable or suitable facilities in Clonakilty, production moved to Little Island, just outside Cork City, in 1992. The intention was always to return to Clonakilty if this became possible. Sadly, in 2005, Edward was diagnosed with an aggressive form of motor neuron disease and died after only five months. Being a family business, this was a huge blow to everyone, in every way. However, with a good team around her, Colette decided to keep the business on for the sake of her family and their employees. But I suppose at that stage, I didn't want to throw in the towel just immediately. I was saying I would give it, give it a bash first and, and then I'll see, you know. Um, this didn't stop the um, opportunist vultures from lining up though. Colette explains what happened on one occasion. Did you tell them to take a running jump? And there was one guy, <laughs> somebody rang one day and rang and just Marie answered the phone and they said uh, they were humming and and talking about the weather and talking about the different things first. And then um, he came out and he said, I know it was an accountant, and he said, um, is Clown Kilty Black Pudding for sale? And Marie didn't take a minute because she doesn't have to take a minute to come up with something smart. And Marie said, it is, yeah, in shops all over Ireland. <laughs> The company now makes many different food products, but the desire to bring production back to Clonakilty never waned. Despite the extra cost of building from scratch, this brand new factory was opened in October 2017, and it is now the center for production of Clonakilty black pudding worldwide. Visitor Center has also been imaginatively created here, and last week Anita Farr kindly showed me inside. We passed the merchandise display and went upstairs to the interactive exhibition. 
Visitors are given an individual wand that engages with each exhibit. Moving inside, I was greeted by the amusing 12th century vision of Macongoli and the magic properties of good Irish food, including pudding. Ireland as a poet, he decided to visit Cork as he had heard they had excellent white meats there. As you follow the trail, you get a keen sense of the market town that has helped to spawn local innovation. The parish church forms a steady backdrop of neighbourliness and honest relationships. Many other local shops and businesses are modelled here too. And a pound of carrots. Anything else? So, potatoes, two pounds, pound and a half of onions, and the carrots. And your change. Thank you. So, is this your first time being in Clannacan Tea? Well, I hope you have a great time. This is a replica of the original butcher's shop, which is still thriving on the main street to this day. Behind the till, we get to meet another local character. The shop from his uncle in 76, with only three staff and a turnover of 20,000 pounds, it had been such a success. Would you see, when he bought the shop, it came with a recipe. A secret recipe for black pudding. And that recipe is something else. The constant demand for it all What's in the secret recipe, you may ask? Well, there are a number of spices hinted at here, but as for the original recipe, it is still only known by one living person, Colette Toomey. She has put a copy inside this safe and visitors are invited to try and crack the code, but I don't think we've got much of a chance. Colette comes to this factory floor every week to make the secret mix of spices all by herself. No videoing or photography is allowed from this point on in the tour, but visitors to the factory can see into a viewing area that overlaps the new production facility. At the end of the tour, visitors can go inside to a bright airy restaurant to enjoy watching and smelling black pudding being cooked and get ready to taste it firsthand for themselves. There's nothing quite like experiencing it for yourself, is there? Knowing that the pudding has helped to secure Mitchell and Star Awards, I can feel my mouth beginning to water. If Colette and Edward hadn't cared for the recipe, none of this would have been possible. But because they cared, they have become a source of employment, enrichment, and sponsorship of so many different activities and sports throughout Ireland. Caring helps everyone. Now, back to these four cans. When someone dumps a can or a plastic bottle, did you know it takes 500 years for it to naturally decompose in the environment? So, only a mere four cans ago in time, God showed us his secret. God has never stopped caring for us all. On Good Friday, Jesus' blood was shed on the cross. He made the ultimate sacrifice so that we all could be forgiven. Ugly as the crucifixion day was, yet it was good. If you ever doubt God's good love for you, look to the cross and see God's love for you afresh. Then guard that love in your heart like a priceless secret and don't sell it out to vultures like doubt that will try to steal it away. Nevertheless, if I see a can dumped on the side of the road, I wonder is this a sign that we have stopped caring? Imagine if we all didn't care. Amazingly, if cans are recycled, they can be put back to good use within six weeks, against taking 500 years to rot in a ditch. I believe that Clonakilty Food Company has been such a great success because of care. Care for a secret recipe, care for their staff, 
care for their community and country. Good Friday shows us that God cares for us so much that Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. So, knowing we are cared for by God, we will care more for our homes and families, for our neighbours and community, and for our environment that makes Ireland such a special place to live. Good Friday. Care makes our dreams possible. <laughs>